What's up boys, it's Wolf. So, as a lot of you know, the season 2 for The Mandalorian ended a couple weeks ago and uh, a lot of crazy shit happened. There's even this video of a guy reacting to when he saw Luke come in and shit on Moff Gideon's Lunchables. It's funny too, because this was my exact reaction when I was watching season 8 of Game of Thrones. Now, it's at this point where I have to be honest and say that I don't know much about Star Wars. I was a Harry Potter kid growing up, so I could tell you pretty much anything about Harry Potter. Like, did you guys know that Dumbledore was gay? It's, uh, it's actually why Voldemort couldn't kill him. It, it, it really turned the series on its head. Now this one, this next fact is about to throw you guys for a loop. It's a bit of a theory of mine, but I believe the character Dobby is also gay. I mean, he seemed a little too happy to get Harry's sock. I mean, the kid just fought a basilisk. You know the sock is damn near fucking radioactive. You're telling me he's not in love with Harry? Come on. Anyway, the point is I was never too interested in Star Wars. I mean... Watching people use light-up dildos and magic to gang up on a guy with asthma was a little too out there for me. I can, I mean, I can suspend my belief, but people using magic to fly? Come on, that's a little ridiculous. But now that I watched The Mandalorian, I realize that I'm actually the biggest Star Wars fan in history, and uh, I'm now on a mad dash to consume everything related to it. I started watching Clone Wars, the show. I'm gonna buy the Mandalorian armor set, go to work in that shit, all the merch as well, the Jabba the Hutt bed sheets, the Leia BDSM apparatus, even gonna call my firstborn Grogu so when he goes to school he gets bullied and gets a taste for what Order 66 must have felt like. But anyway, this search for Star Wars content led me to the video game side of the franchise and more specifically Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. So before I get into my theory, I want to do a quick repack, repack? A quick recap of the game, Jesus. Now, the Nazis didn't leave much behind, but they didn't make sure that EA got the rights to anything to do with Star Wars as far as games go. This game was not finished at launch. Tons of videos spawned about how you basically paid 60 bucks to play a beta of the game, except a beta would imply that it was tested at some point in development, with which this game clearly wasn't. But now that it's had a year to actually get finished, I must say, game game is pretty good. Most of the bugs are gone, well, except for the motherfucker doing the 2C slide on my ass, but other than that, I was actually unironically surprised at this game. Once it was finally polished up a little bit, well, polished being a relative term, the gameplay kind of began to speak for itself. I mean, it's not some crazy in-depth game like God of War in terms of combos or things like this, but it's flashy enough to still be satisfying. Also, I'm not even gonna attempt to get my bull to shit and sell it to you by telling you that this story is some literary marvel, but I really did appreciate how well written some of the characters are. The conversations they had felt real and human, like they truly existed inside of the world. Within the first 30 minutes of playing, the main antagonist is already better than the Three Stooges in the new trilogy. The main character, Cal Kestis, makes Rey look like she was written by the people who wrote Dragon Tales. All ingredients for a great Star Wars game. And then you get to this boss fight. And at first sight you think to yourself, this is a great boss fight, I wish epileptic people could enjoy it. But once you take her out, the theme of the game comes full circle. This truly is a story of Jedi. These two characters at first glance look like complete opposites, but in reality they're what remains of the Order. In reality they're both the Jedi. They were witness and victims of the Purge and are experiencing the ripple effect of a single phrase. Execute Order 66. With the Jedi then scattered, some will become stronger in their convictions and remain Jedi. Some will cave into fear and their lowest survival instincts falling to the dark side. This is what remains of the Jedi. Neither light nor dark incomplete in their connection to the Force. As we came to know with Luke Skywalker, true light can cast off any shadow, but as Cal and his opposite would soon find out, true darkness is the absence of light. Then they ask you to fight him, and uh, right here, you'll see that I'm keeping my distance from him for reasons unrelated to being scared shitless. I'm just really waiting for him to make the first move, but turns out his first move is to kill me in the first move, so I try to throw a giant metal container at him to which he responds with, no, you then proceeds to throw the entire fucking building at me. Also, I know that Darth Vader technically ended up having light in him at the end, okay? I, it was just a sick line, shut up. And after narrowly escaping the encounter with Darth Vader, Cal then makes the choice not to look for the Force-sensitive children left in the galaxy, as it would just put a giant target on their back, and they could not guarantee their safety until balance was restored in the Force. Now this is where my theory comes in. 
I watched Return of the Jedi yesterday, and uh, it's pretty safe to say that the balance was beginning to tip the other way. So much so that Luke himself started to train new Jedi, which it's pretty safe to say that Grogu would be part of those that were being trained. That is, of course, till Ryan Johnson in his infinite wisdom decided that Luke Skywalker liked to do a lot of shrooms, and then one night after smoking, he goes back to his tent to cuddle with R2-D2, but instead he finds one of his students sleeping in his tent, so he does what any logical man would do and goes to kill this kid by any means necessary, sparking another mini-purge where some die and some become the Knights of Ren. Now, I may not know shit about Star Wars, but symbolism is uniform throughout storytelling, regardless of what it is. Grogu is symbolism for the future of the Jedi. The reason why they chose him to be Yoda's race is so that the audience could easily grasp onto the importance of this character and what he will grow up to become, a guardian for the Jedi. As we saw, Luke would be the one to become his teacher, but would also fail in the end. It was, I mean, yeah, it was complete bullshit, but it happened. And Cal could be the one to succeed. His story is just too perfectly aligned with this particular purpose. His entire story is a passing of a torch and him wrestling with the idea of having to raise a new generation when he himself never got to finish his training. He held in his hands the hope of the Jedi and decided he couldn't trust himself to be ready, so he trusted the Force instead. But by the time Luke becomes a shroom addict, he would be more than ready. He'd be like 50 years old or something. At which point he would come in and finish Grogu's training while Rey and Kylo Ren are too busy sending Snapchats to each other. The only problem I see with this is I don't know if Jon Favreau even knows this game exists. I mean, I know he knows it exists, but how seriously do they take these games over there? I mean, the cool thing about it would be like legitimizing the game side of the franchise, but... Do you want to legitimize the game side of the franchise? Do you want to legitimize EA? Like, if I was in their position, I would be like, hell no, dog. But then again, I don't know. They did do a pretty good job with this game, for the most part. One thing is for sure, we're probably not going to see Grogu for a while. So let's see where Fallen Order 2 goes, and that should make it a little more clear as to how they plan to use this character. So far, the games have been allowed to be part of the canon, not to create canon. So it'd be interesting to see if uh, Fallen Order 2 will be creating canon as opposed to just following it. So, anyway, that's pretty much it for me. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Roll the outro, bitch. Bitch! Bitch!